sun, ray of sunshine said uh, i believe they were referring back to when i mentioned something earlier about you know people believe that you know if you die and don't believe you know you'll go to hell and you know you'll be tortured by satan or something they said um satan isn't in hell he's on earth yeah you're right just like when we saw in job chapter two right god asked satan you know from where do you come from right where comes that and satan said from walking to and fro within the earth. And we see another example in, um, what is that, Matthew, the fourth chapter, where Christ went and um, he got tempted by the devil when he stayed in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. Right, so the devil is wandering around on the earth. He can go and tempt people, bring temptations and hardships on people, but he has to get permission from the father to do so. Hell, and deacon, right, deacon Haka. Got to give him credit. He did a good video like it last night about, um, you know, who has more kills, right? Who has a bigger kill streak, Satan or God? Because most Christians will tell you that uh, they'll tell you that Satan has a big kill streak, but God doesn't. That's what the average Christian will tell you. Because, again, a Christian thinks that Satan kills, right? If somebody dies, that's Satan who killed that person. But that's not true. What is that? First Samuel chapter two, verse six. For I, the Lord kills and makes alive. He wounds and he heals. And there's none that can deliver out of his hands. Right. The Bible says that God kills, not Satan. Hell, and believe it or not. You know, some people have decided based on the fact that they've read the Bible and found out that God has way more kills than the devil. They actually now believe that when you see God killing people in the Bible. That's actually Satan. And they'll use the verse where it says the angel, the, excuse me, that Satan can transform himself into an angel of light. And when you say that, we'll see, well, that proves that that's the devil because it says, we'll see, an, uh, Satan can transform himself into an angel of light. So when it says that God brought the flood on the world and wiped out every man, woman, and child and uh, cattle and, you know, creeping things and whatever, that was Satan who did that. And there was one dumbass I was talking to last year who was, um, you know, one of these dudes who believes that Satan's the God of the Old Testament. You know, just to mess with him, I asked him, so are you saying that since Satan's the God of the Old Testament, are you saying the Israelites are Satan's chosen people? And he was like, absolutely, right? The Israelites are Satan's chosen people. So wait a second. So why, why the hell did Christ come to bring salvation to satan's people but he calls them his people and and here, here's the biggest this is the biggest knockout that i might have ever handed out before this is, might be the biggest spiritual knockout that i have ever handed out what i asked to do is okay let's say this if you're saying that the god who gave the laws in the old testament was the devil well why is jesus right who you call jesus in the new testament why is he teaching people to live by the laws that the God of the Old Testament gave? So why is Jesus teaching people to live by Satan's laws? When I asked him that, he was like, uh, next question. Because he had no answer. He literally had no way to answer that question because it undeniably refutes his whole belief. Because if Satan was the God of the Old Testament, why the hell was Jesus teaching people to live by those laws if that's Satan who said that and not actually the Father? So, I mean, again, these, these guys are like, these guys are like, they're twisting themselves into a damn pretzel with these ideologies that they believe. You know, it's a, again, it's a damn shame, but, you know, this is what's going on. <coughs> Bear with me a second. <laughs> Just scrolling through the chat, make sure I hit everything. Then Ray said, which Ray brought up, I won't read all the comments, but they brought up the one in Matthew, the 25th chapter, about what Christ spoke about. You know, he had the two groups of people. The, both groups claimed to believe, but the one group, they did all these things. They helped the poor. They, you know, clothed the, the ones who needed clothes. They visited those in prisons. They fed those who were hungry. They did all those things, and Christ rewarded them. But the ones who also believed who did not do those things, he punished them for it. Um, then Ray said, this is 
what it means to follow Christ, and we should want to do those things, not just because he commanded. Right, and this goes into the whole other topic about how people will bring up this argument about there's verses in the Bible that speak about it's of grace and not of works. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean that you just say you believe and don't do any works? No, it's very simple what it means. You have people in the world who just believe that by doing good works by itself is going to save them. Like you have people who don't believe in Christ, but they believe that by, you know, going out and giving to the poor, by feeding the hungry, by giving away their spare clothes to the needy, doing things like that, it will get them to a good place when they die without believing on a God. So people like that, even though they might have a form of godliness, meaning what? They might do some of those things that Christ likes, but they deny him. So guess what? Even though they do those things, they're not going to make it to the kingdom of heaven, even though they do those things because they reject Christ. And remember, John, the third chapter, it says, he that believes not, he's condemned already. Right. So if you don't believe that what people call Jesus, a.k.a. Yahushai, if you don't believe that he died on the cross for your sins, well, then you're condemned already. You can't be saved. That's very simple. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Dave Freak? How you doing, man? You missed a good one tonight, but don't worry. The stream will stay up on YouTube. Yeah, you have a good night too, Ray. You know what? Just for my OCD, just for my OCD, I'll round it out that three hours, or I should say three hours, inside joke. I'll round the stream out at three hours. So we'll go for 10 more minutes, and then I'll wrap the show up. Uh, Let's see. Oh, there's another good statement. Ray said, yeah, God is in control. Yeah, and that's a true statement. You know, God's in control of all things, man. You know, whether it be whether it be good or bad, right? God has his hand behind everything. That's why, say for an example, oh, what is that? Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1. It says, the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. And as the rivers of water, he'll turn him at his will. Right, God has his hand behind all the affairs in the world. Like, like what's going on in Ukraine right now? God has his hand in that. He put it into Putin's mind to move on Ukraine. Just going by the verse I just quoted. Right. God has the king's heart. God has Putin's heart in his mind. And he'll turn it at his will. You know, it's uh, it's very simple to understand. But again, doctrines like this, like say for an example, if I make a statement and say that God's behind um, you know, the things going on right now, people look at me and say, oh, well, you're, you're wicked, right? You're wicked to say that. Like, say, for example, if I go downtown, then, uh, if I go downtown and go to these churches, which by the way are, they have signs on the door that say you can't enter our premise without taking a, a Corolla yab and wearing a face diaper, as Minus Reg would say. And then there's a church down the street from there flying a rainbow flag outside the church. But if I was to go up to them and say, well, God is against all these things and, you know, America will be judged for that. They'll, you know, kick my ass out the door and will call me, a, you know, a Satanist for saying that God is against those things. But again, this is the this is how delusional people are. This is like the the stupidity that the population is on. Even these people that are supposed to be like in the know. Even these people who claim to be about God and about Christ, even they're going along with the mainstream narrative without even knowing. Like, isn't that amazing that these people think they got Jesus on their mind, right? But yeah, they're out there, you know, being gay for Jesus, you know, and shit like that. It's amazing. Uh, let's see. Uh, GTF said, uh, ETT, do you think we are going to be beheaded like it talks about in Revelation chapter 20? Yeah, you're talking about uh, where it speaks about 
the elect stood before the Lord where they got. Matter of fact, let, let's even read that real quick. Let, let me pull that up real quick. Let me let me head over there real quick. We'll read a little bit of that. That's a good one. I know what you're talking about. Okay, I got it. Bear with me just a second. Okay, I got it. I'll read it. It's um, Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4 says, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them which got beheaded for the witness of Christ and for the word of God, which they had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, nor had they received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. They lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part of the such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Right. So it's talking about that during the tribulation, which uh, newsflash, the elect are going to be on earth during the time of the great tribulation. Like, believe it or not, even some of the cats that come around here believe that they're going to be raptured away before the tribulation. Like, like a honorable mention would be Minus your rig, right? He, what he tried to do is he claimed that when you see the word tribulation in the Bible, it's different from great tribulation. Like, they mean two different things, and that's not true. It's talking about the same context. Excuse me. It's talking about the same event, but it's just using different wording to it. Like... One verse might say a time of trouble that the world haven't seen, the tribulation. Another one might say there'll be great tribulation. Talking about the same time, it just uses a different word to describe the time. Very simple. Or another one, Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble is the great tribulation time period. It just calls it a different name. Again, it's very simple to understand. So yes, to answer that question, you are going to have some people that get killed beheaded for not taking the mark, which is that radio frequency identification device, right? RFID chip. Now, here's a little fun fact, a little morbid fact, but good to know. Um, you know, I've been doing research into, um, you know, some of these scary facts or whatnot, you know, some interesting stuff. But um, as far as beheading, you know, they've done experiments on, you know, mice and rats because it resembles closely to humans on some of the, you know, experiments they do on it. And they find out that, um, you know, when you decapitate them, the brain is still conscious for like four seconds, three to four seconds after the decapitation, right? So the person, hypothetically, right, if somebody was to get killed by a gu guillotine, look that up, which, by the way, there's 30,000 guillotines stored across the United States in these FEMA camps. Look it up. Um, but if you got decapitated by a guillotine, you'd be alive for three to four seconds. You know, and that's, um, you know, it seems like a long time, but that goes by quick. You know, but you don't die right away when your head comes off. You're still conscious for like three or four seconds until the, your, you know, your fluid leaves your brain. You know, that's a little morbid fun fact for you. Uh, let's see. Let me just get caught up on these. Yeah, thanks for stopping by, Luke. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Hey, you'll have to hop on next time, man. Uh, let's see. GTF said they teach everyone that in school. And when they talk about the French Revolution, I am not sure that's true. It might just be the nerves. Well, I've um, I've heard this story once before about the scientist who uh, back when they were still, 
using the guillotine to, you know, to kill the prisoners and whatnot. They worked out a plan with this prisoner. What they would do is he was sentenced to death, so he was going to die anyway. So he t- p- t- partook, excuse me, in this scientific experiment where when he got his head cut off, he had to blink to the scientist so they knew he was still conscious. Look that up. It's um, it's interesting. Whether it's true or not, I believe it's true, but um, but uh, I can't hundred percent say. But uh, based on that, he is still was conscious for like three or four seconds after he died. So again, it's definitely um, you know, definitely an interesting subject. Yeah, that's cool, Luke. You know, when you're when you're available, that's cool. <laughs> Bear for me a second. So I'm going to wrap it up in a minute. All right, but anyway, guys, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna call that the stream there, and uh.